In Iraq, the American forces are in the middle of a very important battle. Miles and some of his teammates go inside a crumbling building for cover as they keep on firing at the enemy. Unfortunately their captain is shot right in the neck and he quickly bleeds out, dying in Miles' arms. Suddenly an explosion makes the whole building shake and a bright light appears in the area before Miles goes out to fight again. As he runs up a hill, a bullet hits him in the stomach and he falls to the ground. Miles looks up and sees two missile-like objects fly by followed by a strange aircraft, which suddenly turns its light toward him and makes him scream before passing out. Sometime later, Miles wakes up in pain inside a strange room. There are no windows or doors, it's gray panels covering every inch from corner to corner. Miles forces himself to stand up and take a closer look at the wall, but his wound is bleeding heavily and he falls again. He cries out for help but nobody answers, so he uses his emergency supplies to clean the wound and wrap it up. Then Miles tries using his radio, however it isn't working. When he looks up, he sees the word abandoned on a wall, which wasn't there before. He tries asking for help again and this time he tries the few words he knows in Arabic, to no avail. When he looks again, the wall now says abandon all and the floor shows save the sinner's soul. Miles takes another look and now the phrase says abandon all hope. Starting to feel dizzy, Miles takes off his backpack and his clothes, realizing the temperature in the room is going up rather quickly. Miles' body sweats like crazy and he starts freaking out, hitting the wall as he begs to be let out. His sweat boils when it drips on the ground and Miles starts wondering if he's actually dead, slowly losing his mind and getting paranoid to the point he grabs his gun to shoot at the walls. Eventually the heat is too much and he falls to the ground, screaming in unbearable pain before passing out. Later when Miles wakes up, the temperature is back to normal. He rushes to grab his flask to drink some water, but at that moment the room starts spinning. Miles is thrown around with his things, getting hurt every time he lands on the spinning walls. This goes on for a few minutes and when it finally stops, Miles notices the room is on a new position because the words are now on different spots. To his shock, some of his things are stuck on the ceiling. At first Miles freaks out, thinking it's a dream. When he calms down he tries the radio again and after several minutes of silence he hears a woman's voice, but the call quickly ends. Miles thinks the room is refracting the signal and remembers he also has a cell phone, which is on the ceiling. He can't remember the number, so he uses his binoculars to check the sticker and carves the number on the floor with his knife. Suddenly the phone starts ringing and Miles tries jumping to reach it, but that makes his wound worse. Next he throws a shoe, but instead of hitting the phone it gets stuck on the ceiling too. At that moment frost starts appearing on the walls, so Miles rushes to put on any clothes he can reach before getting into fetal position as the frost begins covering his face as well. Moments later, the frost disappears as quickly as it came and Miles is left with purple fingers. He rubs his body in search of heat and hears the phone ring again, so he just gives it the finger. Suddenly an alarm rings and the room starts moving again, making the phone fall. As Miles is painfully thrown all over the place once more, he makes sure to reach for the phone and grab it right before the spinning stops. Now he's also regained access to his helmet, so he takes out the picture of his wife and daughter to save it in his pocket, then he eats some gum he had before battle. Next he checks the call log on the phone and dials the number that called him. At first there's only static, but soon he can hear a woman's voice. She explains she's been kidnapped and she's in a spinning room, so Miles asks her to describe it and confirms she's in a room exactly like his. When the woman mentions there are no light sources but she can still see, Miles realizes he's in the same situation and takes a closer look at his own arm. It's almost as if their bodies are the light sources themselves. Then Miles asks a few questions to learn more about the woman, but she freaks out because she thinks he's part of a scam. He snaps and yells at her, explaining he's trapped too but also bleeding. The woman cries and apologizes, agreeing to work together. Her name is Damsey and before she was kidnapped she was on the highway. Miles remembers his team was near the highway and Damsey asks if he was stationed there, which makes Miles freak out because he never said he was a soldier. Damsey assures her she guessed based on the questions he asked and the way he speaks. At that moment Damsey stops speaking and grunts in pain instead. Miles' tags are suddenly pulled back and the chain starts choking him as an invisible force opens his arms as well, making him drop the phone. His body starts floating and a bright light appears, pulling all his limbs before dropping him to the ground. On the phone, Damsey can be heard being dropped too. Then Miles hears a weird noise and warns Damsey that the room is about to move again. However instead of spinning, this time the walls start moving inward. Miles panics and tries to push a wall, only to fall and pass out. When Miles wakes up, he discovers the room has shrunk. He has a panic attack as Damsey calls again, telling him her room has shrunk too. When she realizes what's happening to him, she guides him with soft words to calm him down. Then Damsey starts cursing because she's putting her shoulder back in. Miles notices words on the wall in languages he can't understand and Damsey confirms they are in her room as well. Damsey also explains nobody grabbed her when she was in the highway, mentioning a location from Massachusetts. This makes Miles realize it doesn't make sense for them to communicate because his phone belongs to a closed network and he still thinks they're in Iraq. Damsey also freaks out because setting up something like this would take many days and she claims she's been there for around an hour. She's nobody important so she can't understand why someone would take her, but before she was kidnapped she saw the same things in the sky as Miles. Next Miles starts screaming through the different walls to check if Damsey is her bunker neighbor, but she can't hear him. He wonders how she got his number, and Damsey says it appeared on her ceiling. Suddenly the phone announces another call and Miles tells Damsey to call him later before taking it. A man starts talking in another language so Miles asks for English. The guy isn't fluent but he manages to say that they can't win because they can't solve the equation, so they must die. 
Before Miles can ask for clarification, the call ends and the phone changes back to Damsey. Miles asks her if she knows anything about an equation while changing the bandages on his wound, but Damsey can't see any equation. Then Damsey wants to establish some kind of pattern to know why they were chosen, since she can't believe they were picked at random. She shares that she's an algebra teacher and engaged to a former soldier. However, she doesn't sound very happy talking about her fiancé, implying he changed a lot after he came home from war. In return, Miles admits he and his wife aren't currently on the best of terms. Then Miles eats the last rations from his backpack while watching the words on the walls. Some of the words have years, going from 1951 to 2007. Miles thinks they're using them to mess with them and they're fake because for him it's 1991. Damsey laughs as she realizes he isn't using a smartphone and brings up things like social media and selfies, but Miles doesn't understand her. Suddenly the room starts glowing and emitting a noise that makes Miles' ears bleed, but he still checks his watch to notice the room movements are happening more often. He writes the times on his arm before grabbing his head, screaming in unbearable pain before passing out. Moments later he wakes up trembling and having trouble breathing, unable to pick up the ringing phone. The word answer appears on the wall so he forces himself to take the call. He tells Damsey that there isn't enough air and finally notices the room is even smaller now. The same happened to Damsey, who shares her theory, she thinks she, Miles, and other people are all in the same room at the same time just in different years. She asks him to draw something on the wall and Miles makes an X, which is then surrounded by a hand drawn by Damsey. In her time, the year is 2020. She talks about the fourth dimension and shares she's always been better than average at math, prompting Miles to confess he's always been very good at math too but he was never the academic type. Feeling exhausted, Miles falls to the ground while pointing out these beings are probably testing their bodies with all the weird changes to the room. He asks Damsey about the future and he's sad to hear the war is still going. Miles calls it the sins of the father and shares that his own dad fought in Vietnam before passing out. Damsey calls his name and he immediately wakes up, saying she needs him. At that moment, Miles notices that his Arabic dictionary dropped out from his bag and some of the symbols match the ones on the wall. He starts translating the message and writes it on the floor so Damsey can see it too, and the final result is an equation. Damsey recognizes it as the work of a famous mathematician who studied higher dimensions, but he never got to finish it. Another trapped person must be a mathematician and wrote it as a clue, which makes Miles and Damsey realize the kidnapped people are all connected to math in some way. Suddenly someone starts scribbling on both the Arabic equation and the translation to cover them, so Miles hurries to write what he remembers on his arm. Then Damsey confesses that she works as a teacher but she actually has a very advanced degree in math. Her fiancé got her the teaching job because he doesn't like it when she talks smart. Damsey asks Miles if the war has changed him and made him hurt someone he loves, so he explains war transforms humans into animals. Guessing Damsey's fiancé must be abusive, he shares that his own dad used to beat his mom but Miles couldn't do anything because he was too young. The day he tried to stop his dad, the man threw Miles on the pullout bed and shut it. He couldn't move or breathe, he could only hear his dad beating his mom up. Afterward Damsey concentrates and manages to remember the equation, so Miles asks her to write it on the wall before another change happens. Damsey struggles because she's using her keys to scratch the wall, which takes time. At that moment the room starts shaking and Miles' hands are forced to touch the ground. He tries to remove them but he can't, it seems the gravitational pull has become quite stronger. Soon Miles' knees are pulled down too and the bullet is pulled out of his wound before his face hits the ground as well, making him bleed even more. Miles screams as his entire body suffers the force of the pull, but in just a few minutes is over. A trembling Miles reaches for the phone and curses when he sees the cracked screen. Then the alarm rings and the room starts spinning again. Since it's smaller, Miles can jump from wall to wall instead of being thrown around. The spinning doesn't last long this time and the light goes out for a few seconds. When Miles can see again, he notices the room has shrunk even more. As he trembles and reminds himself to keep it together, Miles tries the phone. At first nothing happens and he's ready to give up, but eventually Damsey answers. Unfortunately she's interrupted by a call from the foreign man, who says they can't see or know. The man keeps repeating they must fail sacrifice and Miles doesn't understand what he means, so he hangs up. Now he can talk to Damsey again, although first he must wait for the static to stop. Damsey says she broke her arm, that she's running out of battery, and that death is their only option. Miles realizes she's been working with a foreign man the entire time, so Damsey finally shares what she knows. They were caught by a superior species who are testing human intelligence to check if they're a threat. Damsey thinks humanity isn't smart enough to go against these aliens, but Miles swears they can learn to control the room with enough concentration. As Damsey thinks about the equation and how the solution must be the answer to escaping, the light goes out. In the darkness, Miles can be heard screaming and cursing at the aliens, ignoring Damsey's attempts to calm him down. Suddenly he starts having flashbacks from his time during the war and his dad beating his mom, causing Miles to yell under the psychological torture. He squirms on the floor as he reaches for his gun, but he can't defend himself from something in his head. Eventually the flashbacks stop and Miles tells the aliens they won, so he asks them to end things. As he cries, he gets his gun ready to self-delete if necessary. He says he can't deal with all his trauma anymore and asks his dad why he killed his mom, admitting he's slowly becoming his father but doesn't want to be. After reminding himself that he isn't his father, Miles lowers the gun and calls Damsey, who is also crying. She saw flashbacks of her fiancé, and she admits she has scars from all the times he beat her. One day she finally ran away and drove so fast down the highway that she crashed, that's when the aliens took her. 
Damsey asks Miles if he ever hurt his wife, so Miles answers that he never did but he's thought about it. Disgusted, Damsey hangs up. Then a call comes from the foreign man, scolding Miles for trying to solve the equation. He insists they mustn't win because then humans will become a threat as bad as the aliens themselves. These creatures shouldn't see Earth as a threat either or who knows how they could react, it's better to pretend to be innocent lab rats. Suddenly the alarm rings and the room starts shrinking again. Miles tries to stop it to no avail and soon his body is twisted in a very tight space. At that moment Damsey calls again and asks the same question, so Miles swears he never hit his family. He had urges but he fought against them to avoid being like his dad. Miles thinks he's sick and that's why Damsey should be the one to solve the equation, she's the better person and the one that deserves to get out. He apologizes for who he is and for what Damsey went through, and Damsey forgives him. Miles asks her to find his family and tell them he loves them and they deserve better. Now Damsey has the strength to finish the equation, using the time between room movements as clues. The answer is one, so Damsey tries concentrating to take control of the room and spin it one time, but nothing happens. Damsey thinks about it and realizes that one person alone can't be a threat, the answer means mankind is one. The aliens want to see if humans are capable of dropping the fighting and working together. Miles concentrates and starts pushing the room too so he can help Damsey, and the duo screams together until the room suddenly explodes into a bright light. To their shock, Damsey and Miles see each other touching hands and floating in the light. The wall panels float around them too, showing all the other people that were kidnapped. This means they've solved the equation and freed all the victims. Damsey and Miles say hi to each other and share a smile before they disappear in the light. Seconds later, Miles appears back in Iraq. He starts making his way back to his team, only to hear sirens wailing and see planes flying by. When he finds the American troops, they're looking at something dangerous in the sky. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.